Okay, alright, I'm hiding. Damn, everything looks darker on the recording than it does. Everything looks much brighter on. Anyway. Hiding behind a rock so nothing can see me, nothing can come fight me. Before I get into this goddamn game, I'm gonna answer all your questions. I can't remember all your questions, but still, like, I have. One of them is because, I mean, well, I've been getting. It seems like almost every single time I post a Blaze Blue video at this point, somebody asks me if I'm getting Persona 4 Arena. Yes, I am getting Persona 4 Arena. Uh, and I'm looking to play Ken. I've actually, they just released a gameplay trailer for Margaret, though, and she actually looks pretty interesting, I'm not gonna lie, the, di the, obviously the deciding factor there is whether or not Margaret is like, my problem with Persona 4 Arena is I know very, well, not really a problem, my choice for Persona 4 Arena is that I know very little about it, I'm intentionally distancing myself from knowledge of the game, from videos of the game, so like I'll watch those quick, those quick gameplay trailers on characters I don't know anything about in order to just kind of get like an idea of what they look like in motion and whatnot. But I know very little of them when it actually comes down to like the theory of it, what their moves do. You know, people are trying to analyze them and shit. I want to do that myself. I'm not interested in reading it from somebody else. I want to do that myself. That's part of the fun of fighting games to me. Uh, so I've been avoiding most information in regard to the game. So I don't know. I know that it's been announced that both Adachi and Marie are going to be like for the first week after release they're gonna be free they're downloadable for free I don't know if Margaret is included in that and that will be the deciding factor because I'm not gonna pay money for DLC characters anymore not from Arc System Works they're doing uh, I, well, it depends it, I don't wanna say just a blanket statement like that but like if they make it like coconut oil where it's eight dollars to download a character it's not gonna happen but if it's like Two dollars, three dollars. I mean, I'd probably go up to five, maybe. I'd say five would definitely be my cutoff point, but I would have to look into it more because I don't want to pay that much for a character I just don't give a shit about. But yeah, so I am looking at Persona 4 Arena, and right now Ken is definitely looking like the dude that I'm most interested in, especially because he has Koromaru, and I love me some Koromaru, man. I mean, it's a dog. I love dogs. Um. So yeah. I think that was pretty much it. The reason why it's like, though I am actually talking about this right now is because the last Blaze Blue video I put up, somebody asked me that. And for some reason, that was the comment where that, you know, the dude was talking shit about the characters I was picking and whatnot. And for some reason, out of like 40 plus comments on the page, the guy that, like pretty much the only one that asked a question that I could respond to was the one that, like, the reply button just wasn't there. I don't know why. Like, there was just no reply button. I could not reply to the dude. And, um, trying to, like, tag him brought up, like, ten different names that were exactly the same as his. But none of them, they all had different icons, like, avatars or whatever. So none of them were him. <laughs> so I just, I couldn't respond to him. I couldn't reply. It was literally, YouTube made it impossible. Fucking YouTube. So, um... So yeah, so let's talk about this, let's talk about Tales of Zillia 2 and we'll get into fighting. So basically, the biggest change overall in this game, aside from the obvious story, check out how stupid this is, check out how stupid this shit is. Camera move faster, camera move faster, I gotta see. Camera! Oh, there's shit. Oh fuck, I'm, I, it's a fucking flower, I can't tell what goddamn way is the front and which is not. Ow, what hit me? Steal? Fine, don't steal. So basically, the biggest changes you're seeing in this shit right here, these power hits. Uh, basically every single damage type- Well, basically every single enemy in the game now has a specific weakness. Whether or not that is to- I think we might be able to actually see this if we go like just to- Oops, my bad. No, 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 I don't want to swap. Can we know? Okay, I'll get into another fight. But basically, every single enemy in the game has. Eh, <laughs> kiting, yay! Yo, seriously, where? Like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. There we go. It's so dumb. You can't sneak up on enemies. It's literally impossible to sneak up on enemies. Like, they will always know. Even if you're walking up directly from behind, they will always. Oh, right, right, right. So, this shit. Like, you can see, there's like a list of everything on there. So, that's what. Eight damage types looks like nine damage types, nine damage types. Um, 
And so every single weapon or attack in the game has a damage type. So like right now I'm using the hammer, which I think is considered smash damage. Uh, I also have dual swords, which is considered slash damage. And so basically everything in the game now has a specific weakness. And as you can see, that's also strong against some shit. I think that's strong against wind, if I'm remembering my dudes correctly. That's the biggest change in the game. And that's also one of the things that I've immediately thought of that I think was a missed opportunity. This was their chance to really make it viable to continually to shift in and out of character select. Like, to learn all the different characters. I understand why they did this too, because not everybody wants to learn all the different characters. People want to, you know, some a lot of people just want to pick the main character and that's that. And that's how it is. But I really feel like this was their opportunity to really differentiate every single character from each other make it worthwhile to switch characters to pick different characters because each character has a specific damage type they're good at and then from that point onward you know you know okay this person's weak to smash damage so let me switch to Jude because that's his main damage type and then you keep him you keep Ludger with his dual swords and so if you need a slash damage type there you go you got Ludger right there you need elemental damage, you switch to a mage and you throw out the specific elemental damage. Or, you know, you have uh, different characters with different skills that have elemental damage. Like right now, Lugger has two skills uh, when his dual swords are equipped that are, I believe, wind properties. I don't know exactly, specifically what they're called. Um, but yeah, like this is the, that was the, really their opportunity to really make it give you that extra boost to switching between characters, learning different characters, knowing how to use different characters. And instead of that, they made Ludger, this jack of all trades character, who can see. Check it out. See, I switch. And as far as I'm aware, he's gonna continue just getting more and more weapon types. So eventually, he's just gonna be a catch-all. He's gonna be. He can do everything himself. You don't have. You don't have to give a shit about any of the char other characters, any of their play styles. Can we talk about what's going on with Leia's costume though? Because I don't know what the fuck is going on with Leia. Like, th that's too much. That's too much. It starts out pink and black on the bottom, then it gets just this big ass white fluffy shit, then black stockings, brown trousers, then yellow, just bright canary yellow with blue. And then the hat is like everything, her costume is all over the damn place, what the fuck? Rowan is looking like a classy motherfucker though, Gaius looked like a classy motherfucker too, we met him but he's obviously not here right now, but yeah I like Gaius. I really like, I don't know why in general, I just like characters that are dressed in like nice suits I don't know why but I like it they look spiffy and I like spiffy but yeah so that was that's my biggest thing but can we just talk about this random ass smooth jazz oh my kitty return this shit like I like the music don't get me wrong I like the music but how is this suitable how is this at all suitable for like roaming around Oh, I didn't get shit. Oh, hey, I got a cat. Oh, look at that. It tells you how many... tells you the cats you can find. So I wonder if... Because Carol and Suzu... I found on my own. Winnie, I just got through the... Because I, I did find an... Oops, my bad. What do you think I did find one? another one in Duval, too. Yeah, New York. Did I find one? No, that was the one that I found manually. So yeah, it looks like there's a bunch of them that you can only find through sending them out for searches. But anyway, I like the, I kind of like this. It's it's kind of a cool feature. It gives like basically it, for what it it seems like like the last game had those black feather the jet black feathers I think they were called as your collectibles. And in this game, it looks like your collectibles are the cats. Like you just you got to find the cats. And it seems like uh, sending them out you send them out, and then the more cats you have, the more stuff you get. Etc. Etc. And it looks like each one has. I like. I kind of like that feature because it gives the collectibles purpose. It gives you a reason to collect the collectibles other than just hey, go collect these for a title or some. Actually, they. Well, they did have a feature in the first uh, in Tales of Zillia because you could trade them in for items. But can we just talk about how stupid this is? How it's been since Tales of Zillia. I apologize for anybody who gets motion sickness right here. It's impossible to sneak up on anybody, like normally. It's just, it's literally impossible. You have to, yes, knock him down. Steal. I don't steal. Bitch. It's literally impossible to sneak up on anybody normally. You have to kite them like that. 
You can't just like position yourself so you walk up from behind. You have to just kite them like that until they stop chasing you. And then once they stop chasing you, you can get that advantageous attack. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. I hate it. It's some silly ass shit, but it's what you gotta do. Because I'm sure there's a title for this. There has to be a title for this. I think he stopped chasing. Yep. It's silly. That's silly. That's stupid and it's been in there since Tales of Zillia. Change that. Oh, damn, my body hit. That did not knock down. That's gonna be a problem, though, if I keep getting more and more different weapon types with Luger. How am I gonna, how am I gonna keep all the arts separate from each other? Because he has a different set of arts for every single... I don't know what I'm doing here. He has a different set of arts for every single weapon type. Such that I'm going after an elite monster, and we're gonna see soon after I beat this elite monster... Who is a, literally the one of the Gigantos monsters from? Can I like? Can I get a special attack on that? Like, please tell me I can get a special attack on this fucking guy. Oh no. All right. So the shit. What was? Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I need to switch. I need to switch my weapons. Get me out! Ow. Yo, slow down right now. Can we talk about the slow down right now? Can we talk about how I'm getting my ass kicked right now? Oh, that's why. Okay, let me switch to Jude. Oh, shit. Too late. Alright, I guess. No, I'll switch to Jude. Jesus. I am not at all prepared. Free run! The most balanced mechanic in every single Tales of game. <laughs> it's always fair. Oh, shit. Okay, I, we need to kill this thing. I don't know why I just got a back step, but I did. Oh shit, it's good. I can't even see, like, I know that dude's beating the shit out of me, but I can't even see him because of the camera right now. Ow! Shit, I'm getting fucked up right now. There, okay, killed one of them. Now I gotta kill the other one. Where is it? Over there. Oh, wait, what? Did it get, like, resurrected or some shit? It looks like it got resurrected. Oh, can we talk about the. Oh, never mind. I completely missed that time. So it looks like. Are there always two of them? There's always. Okay, so never mind. Fuck that shit. Regroup! We gotta regroup. I'm gonna just spam that. Oh, I have no more shit. <laughs> Give me. Oh, did somebody just use an item on me? Somebody just used an item on me. Yeah, we're kind of getting bopped here. Did I just get. Ten fucking oh that's right because I only have oh, no that's not right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I just see these things are getting these things are healing. These things are healing him. How if he continually brings those dudes back, how am I supposed to beat him? Like, they heal him. Uh-huh. Nate's confused right now. I honestly don't understand how I'm supposed to be blowing this dude up. I'm really all that oh shit. Double twice the power. And twice more again. 
Not working out for me. Ow, I tried to backstep it. I got orange gels now. Yo, this is, I need to use regular attacks to blow this, to, like, to get my SP back, but... Shit, shit, shit. Did Rowan just die? Yo, Rowan just died. Oh, fuck, they're after me. Balls, balls, balls. This is actually kind of a terrible position here. Leia! Leia! I actually, yeah, I really don't know. Clearly, I was not at all prepared. What is this dude doing? What is this dude? What is he doing? <laughs> that scared the shit out of me. I have plenty of life bottles, though. <laughs> that was fucking awesome. Bring him back immediately. Just gets buffed. Ah, oh, you were supposed to run. Fuck! I can't run from this guy. Heal. Oh, we can't heal. Shit. Everybody's fucked up. God damn, this dude's range is ugh. I'm, I mean, I'm fucked here. Like, no matter what way you look at it, I am fucked here. Oh shit, everybody's dead. Everybody's dead. I'm dead. I was not it. Okay. We were not. Do I really want to retry the battle? Can we. I bet I can re retry the battle and just escape. But yeah, we got fucked up there. I mean, the issue right now is just, like, it's those things. It's those, it's how it usually is when you run into a boss like this. It's tough. The boss itself isn't that tough. Like, I can lock it down with Ludger. It's the two side butterfly looking motherfuckers that you cannot get rid of that's the problem. So I'm not really sure, I'm not really sure what to do about that, to be perfectly honest. I really don't know. Damn it! See, yeah, like all that effort and basically killing my own SP like entirely did 13k to him. How like a hit by I don't know if that's how it's meant to be, like, you're supposed to just kind of, like, blow this dude up as you can. And then you use these dudes for, like... And then you're supposed to blow these guys up to make up for the SP that you've lost. Like, you just kill these guys continually. Let's try out that tactic. Because the problem is, like, you can't let that dude roam free. That's the major problem. Like, that dude will fuck everybody's day up if you let him roam free. We got this. 
Like now that I'm actually paying attention to the damage. So yeah, we're definitely doing a lot better this time around. I mean, this is all you have to do. Now that I actually thought about it. Ow. Oh, fuck. Serve your strength. I won't lose. Or I'm just an idiot, and I should have been doing that this entire time. So basically, what you gotta do, it looks like, ow. Oh, dude, the stun. Oh, 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 um, 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 oh shit. Everybody's fucked. Oh, never mind, okay, that was different. That was not what I thought it was. I definitely thought that was a, a different thing. I thought everybody got petrified and I thought I lost. Damn, alright, so that was ridiculous. But now we're gonna see after- actually no, we may not see it. No, we're not gonna see it after this because we got no fucking gold there. We just got our goddamn asses kicked. That's it. <laughs> oh, we are gonna see it. Fuck this! This is the dumbest... ...thing in the entire game. It's terrible. See, like... I don't have a problem with the debt system itself. I understand the debt system. I understand what it does. It's your artificial limitator on, you know, like, basically... Oh hey, there's this whole wide world out there for you. You can travel to any of it. Except you can't because uh, the debt handle, like, it, because you're in so much debt, you can't travel to too many places because we can't risk you running away. So we lock you down and then we unlock various locations that you can start to travel to once you start paying off the debt. I understand that. It's the, st it's the uh, story limit. The thing that I don't like about it, to be perfectly honest, is that, like, Okay, it's the uh, it's the limitation imposed on you. That's what I, that's the word I've been looking for. They impose uh, they impose this on you in order to prevent you from traveling around. They're not saying you know like oh the world's not wide open. You just can't get to it yet. What happened to the good old days? I'm gonna get nostalgic and be one of them for a moment. What happened to the good old days when it's like if you tread too far off the beaten path, if you decide to go in the incorrect direction and you explore the wrong fucking place, your penalty is getting just fucked up. Like, your day is just ended by something far more powerful than you. Like, rather than running into this, they call these elite monsters in this game, rather than running into this one elite monster, every single monster in this area is an elite monster. Good fucking luck. Like, what happened to that? Instead of imposing this artificial limitator on me, but that is neither here nor there. Whatever. I don't mind the debt system. I don't mind it. I think it's silly. I think it's a stupid excuse. I think it's a lazy excuse. But I don't care about the debt system because gold is more than easy enough to come by in this game. Um, so, like, the actual debts aren't really an imposition on you continuing the story. But it's this shit. It's this automatic pop-up nonsense that literally happens every just basically after every single battle if you have the money to pay it off after every single battle you run into this it just constantly happens it's an unnecessary intrusion on my gameplay it's fucking silly there's a button see let me just see let me cancel out of that there's a button you can fucking press to bring this up 
That's all it should have been. This is perfectly fine that I have this debt system, but I should never have to deal with these constant interruptions to my game. To my game. This is my game. And dealing with these interruptions is one of the dumbest mechanics I have ever heard. I have just it's, just, it's stupid. It's stupid. It sucks. It's really, really frustrating. Oh, that's another thing I need to talk about. Yes, yes, I can travel to Helioburg. Whoop de fucking do. The silent protagonist. I don't have a problem with this. A lot of people do have a problem with the silent protagonist archetype. I can't get through to Balin's GHS. Especially with uh, Tales in general. Because I don't think the Tales series has ever had a silent protagonist before. I don't have a problem. I don't have an inherent problem with the silent protagonist. They're all over the damn place. Like, I. I oh my god. There are plenty of games that I love that have silent protagonists. It's that he's silent for the first game. Oops, I'm about to use the wrong one. Why aren't you? Why aren't you? Oh, because I have no goddamn. Because I have no SP, stupid. I have no problem with the silent protagonist. It's that. Apparently. This dude, you fucking bitch! No, just go away! It's that apparently, after you beat the game, if you do a new game plus run through, all of the shit that he's silent for, like basically, he, you can't have him talk, and you have him talk whenever uh, you have a like a mission, like a story. You make decisions with Ludger in this game, like different things come up. And so, like, one of the very first prompts that you get is, like, basically your, your brother, Julius, is asking you, Hey, man, you know, you want some, do you want to, do you want some tips from me before you head out, or you just want to go do that? You want to handle your business? And I was just like, yeah, fuck that. I, I want to handle my business. Like, kind of, like, decisions like that. Steal. Steal. You didn't steal. What's the point of being linked with you? You ain't gonna steal. It's stuff like that. You can make decisions. There's little text prompts there. And apparently, the second time you run through the game, those are fully voiced. Like, like I said, perfectly fine. I have no problem with silent protagonists. Not a single one. Don't care. If you want it to be silent, cool. I can read. I'm not illiterate. It's perfectly fine. But why are you going to have it where he's silent the very first run through, but he magically has a voice? in the second playthrough what why not just have him be voiced the entire time like it's just there's no I don't understand that that's the part that I don't fucking get that's so weird and odd to me I don't it just baffles me so is that that looks like it's just kind of a base that link charge shit did he just that looked like Yoon's shoulder check right there that Ju just did. That really did look like Yoon's shoulder check. Did I go? Actually, did I check this out when I came? I don't think I did. Totally didn't. Yay, I got another kitty! So now we only have one more, but the thing that makes me think that I have one more to find in the area rather than finding it through this is that it's the first one listed rather than it being... Because like if we go over, we go over to Duval... As you can see, Luke was the first one I found there. If we go to Marksburg, the one that I found physically there is the first one listed. Oops, my bad. Wait, let me check this other one out. Because right here, Ruby. Okay, well, there's nothing else there. But Ruby I found physically in the field as well. So that's why it makes me think I just missed one. I pro It's probably in the apartments, because I never went back to the apartments there. And basically, you get this side quest by this lady coming up and being like, Oh my god! Listen to all these cat puns! By the way, I own over a hundred cats and they all escaped! Go find them for me! Like, okay, fine, whatever, fuck you. <laughs> but yeah, it's, so... Which one do I have the least? Eh, I guess, whatever, let's just send them to Duval. Bye-bye! Bye-bye! And so, ultimately, like, this game is just, I feel like... Basically, I feel like all the Tails games lately... Oh, let me actually switch. Power hits. Oh, also, L? L can fuck off. L can fuck right off. Like, I don't know if y'all noticed this, but basically... The moment I hit anything with what they're weak to, she's like, Oh, hey! You should hit them with that! Thank you. 
Thank you for that wonderful tip that I totally did not fucking notice by the giant power thing popping up right there. I'm being un- oh, okay, so actually I'm gonna keep that. This also kind of seems not unnecessary, but kind of... I just don't know, but I don't know about this. I don't know, I'm undecided as to whether I actually like this system of learning stuff yet. Because, like, you had... Oops. I'm not meaning to do that. I keep forgetting that that's... Do y'all... Dude. Oh, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I don't, I feel like this game is just a lesson of wasted opportunity. Of, like, decent ideas, poor implementation. So, like, basically this entire game so far, now granted, I haven't played this game for that long. I'm only on, what is it, chapter four? I think I just finished and there's probably, like, 30 chapters or some shit like that. I got a long way to go. Who knows what issues will fix themselves. But ultimately, at this point, I really do feel like this game is just one giant... Like, lesson in how and what wasted potential is. It's just constant wasted potential. Every single system that's in the game could be better. And should be better. But it's, you know, there's something, whatever it is. Oh, there we go. There we go! Woohoo! I need to use the hammer with her! That looked fucking awesome. And that is the one thing I have to give Tales of Zillia. Like, I will always say, ultimately, basically, this is how I feel about the Tales series. I'll, I'll, I'll wrap this up. How I feel about the Tales series that I have played, personally. Tales of Vesperia had the best overall experience. Uh, at the time, it definitely had the best battle system, but Tales of Graces came out, and it kind of, I mean, just Tales of Graces made leaps and bounds forward with their battle system, and this, this kind of drew it a little bit back. But it depends ultimately on what you like, too, because Tales of Graces was also pretty easy to break. Like, it, just, it was a really broken battle system overall. So it depends on whether or not you like it, but I definitely think it was it was my favorite because just because of the potential you had uh, with the battle system there. But it definitely had my favorite characters in the series, no question. There's no competition there in my mind about the best characters in the game. I just the character the character. Oh, that's another thing I need to. I, I'm gonna have to bitch one extra time after I wrap up this whole tales thing. Um, Tales of Vesperia was the best overall package. It had plenty of content, it had the best characters in the game, it had one of the best stories in the game, but it definitely stumbled and had some missteps along the way, there's no question about that in my mind, but overall it was the best, uh, it's the best overall game without really actually being the best at anything aside from characterization. Unless you get into actual, like, game mechanics, I feel like it had the best graphics in the series because I feel like they were, because this game, I don't... I actually really like this game. The game's graphics are good when it's in motion, when you're in the battle system. But when you're outside of the battle system, like this, like this is just boring. The sky is actually kind of pretty fucking cool. But if you get rid of the sky, oh boy. Green and brown. Love it. The entire city of whatever, what's that place called? We're gonna go back. Triglef? It's all gray. The entire city's gray. It's, just, it's boring, it's dull. Uh. The enemy types need to be a lot less. Well, kind of just a problem with the Tales series in general. You have this huge, huge... I have not traveled around this entire section. You have this huge entire area right here. Gigantic area. You have these three enemy types. Four enemy types for the entire area. You got the boar looking dude. You got the bird. You got the wolf. And then you got the, uh, the flower, the plant. That's it. That's all you got. Four enemies... For these huge three sections of the game. That's boring. Fix that shit. 
That's but that's something the tail series has always had. Dungeons just don't have a large variety in enemy types in general. Like that's kind of all you basically have like a max of five different enemy types per dungeon. So that shit gets dull. Um, I'm just going off on so many tangents. Tales of Vesperia, best overall package. Tales of Graces F, best battle system. Uh, a lot of people like the upgrade system. I'll be perfectly honest. I didn't. I use the upgrade system poorly. In that game, I wasted a lot of my shit on titles that I just... I Basically, I kind of just didn't pay close enough attention to the game. And so, um, I, wa I wasted a lot of stuff. I didn't really upgrade that many titles. But I do think, overall, it probably has the... It, that one probably is the best uh, upgrade system. The, Val the Lilium Orb, I think it was called, in Tales of Zillia. That was just... I didn't even give a shit. Like... It was wasted time, in my opinion. In my opinion, this is my own thought. It was wasted time to try and, like, analyze exactly... Once the Lilium Orb started expanding further and further, started getting bigger and bigger, it was just an annoyance to track down, like, the next thing you wanted. So, ultimately, I just started... Especially when you have to do it for every single character. So, ultimately, I just started pre just letting the game do it for me. I just let the game do it. You, you, had a, you could hit the start button, and it would apply all of the points that you've gathered up till then and it just did it for you and that's all I did so that was a so just the fact that I didn't even want to bother with it shows that it's a poor system this game is okay I feel like it's basically an upgraded version of Tales of Abyss's capacity cores like it's more straightforward it actually tells you like if you keep this equipped for now this is what you're actually going to get versus Tales of the Abyss which was just like hey uh, equip this and you might get something, but you might not. I don't know. Just keep it equipped and level up and have fun. So that was, it, it removes a lot of the guesswork, but I'm not... Again, it, it, I haven't really delved into it enough to really get a good idea of whether or not I think this is effective. But I definitely like it a lot more than the Lilium Orb. But yeah, so, like, Tales of Graces F had the best battle system. One of the best upgrade systems, ability... Basically, the gameplay itself in Tales of Graces F was top-notch. One of the best in the Tales series. But the characters were unbearable. The story sucked balls. Like, everything but the gameplay just sucked. It was a game of extremes, I guess. Best gameplay, worst everything else. <laughs> that was Tales of Graces F in a nutshell. Then you get to Tales of Zillia, which is like... It took a step back on the battle system. It's still a good battle system, but it took a step back from Tales of Graces F. It wasn't as good. But the characters were at least slightly better. I have my problems there, and I can go on for a long time about characters. <clears throat> Alvin being fucking terrible. I mean, it's not necessarily Alvin that's actually terrible. It's how the party reacts to Alvin. But I don't want to get into it. I just... Some people like Alvin. Actually, I think from what I've seen, most people like Alvin. I hate the dude. I hate him, and it almost it, that basically killed the game for me. Was how that character acted, and how the party reacted to him. That was one of my biggest. That was one of my biggest flaws with the game. One of my biggest critiques was that interaction in general. But I, like I said, I don't want to get into it. I just said I would wrap this up about six minutes ago, and I'm not wrapping it up at all. <laughs> so I mean, it's just. Tale, it, everything's been kind of downhill since Tales of Vesperia. Nothing has been as good as a complete package as Tales of Vesperia was since then. It's just been kind of like a roller coaster. Like, this part has been good, but this part's been terrible. But this part's good again, but this part's still pretty bad. And just, like, that kind of shit. And so I feel like, basically, all that it's been lately is just... Good ideas, but rushed implementation that made it so it wasn't as good as it could have been. I guess would be my ultimate... Uh, that would be my sum. That would be my summary of the Tales games lately. Good, good ideas, but rushed and noticeably could have. I mean, it just it could have been better. It had a lot of potential and it didn't meet that potential. Basically, would be how I would call it, say the Tales games stack up lately, and we'll see if that continues. But anyway, my other critique, like. 30 minutes into the game, I think basically you have, like, your basically your training mission. Where, like, it teaches you the battle system, it teaches you all this shit. And so you finish that up, and then it gives you this cinematic, basically kind of just... It, basically, it's a trailer, really. That's what it looks like, is a trailer. And it basically spoiled everything. Like, everything that you saw in that shit was a spoiler. You see 
that all every single character in Tales of Zillia is returning, and you're going to be meeting them, and they're going to be in the party. You see that. You see uh, that at the at that point in time, you have no reason to believe that um, this. I won't go into. It's not really a spoiler because, like I said, you learn it within like the first thirty minutes. But this person, one of the first NPCs that you meet. You have no reason to doubt them. You have no reason to think like, oh, this person's going to be a villain. And then that trailer all of a sudden is like, hey, you're totally brawling with this guy later on. He's totally a villain. He even looks like a villain right now. Oh, by the way, you also have this special battle form where you shift into something. I don't know what it is, but it's obviously different than what Lugger usually is. So uh, have fun with that, even though we've not mentioned it in the game once. Have f like That's basically all it was. It's just this constant like barrage of... We have not mentioned anything about this. We have, you have no idea uh, about any of these game mechanics, and we totally could have, like, thrown them at you, and when they happened, you would have been like, oh, damn, that's awesome. But instead of that, we're just going to waste it all and throw it all into this trailer that is going to spoil everything. Cool. Brilliant decision. Really hated that. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't hate the game, but... It's definitely, I, I got this from Gamefly. I got this from Gamefly, and I'm pretty sure it's going back to Gamefly, unless something changes a lot. Because I actually tried to go back and I tried to go back and play both Tales of Graces F and Tales of Zillia. Once Tales of Zillia 2 was kind of starting to come out, I was like, eh, you know what, I should kind of reacquaint myself with everything. I should try it again. I lasted all the 15 minutes in Tales of Graces F, where I was like, nah, you know what, never mind. Don't really want to play this again. Tales of Zillia. I lasted a bit longer about 45 minutes and then I was like nah I don't really care it's not really worth a 20 30 hour playthrough of a game that I just didn't care for in the first place and so I do think this game so far um looks like it is an improvement over Tales of Zillia because the I, I do I really do anything that makes the battle system deeper is good by me that's cool i play this for the battle system so that's good on me so i like the i like the addition of the weakness system but i really do feel like it was a wasted opportunity to really truly differentiate the cast and make them all unique and good and instead they introduced ludger as your oh hey he can do it all so who even gives a shit about the rest of the cast okay cool that that's great that's awesome all right that i'll take okay i'll just i'll just i'll just leave now i'll just i just i don't want to i don't want to use any other characters fine whatever fuck you but like i said the argument is there that a lot of people really they don't care about learning other characters they only want to use the main character so it's kind of it's kind of a lose-lose situation you have people like me that really would like the fact that the entire cast is varied is powerful on the in their own right rather than being kind of a, an afterthought to the main character well, that's not, but then you have the people who like they only want to play as the main character they don't want to play as anybody else and so either way you're going to be critiqued on that point like you're not going to win there overall you can't it's basically one of those things where it's like you cannot please everybody in general you just you can't it's impossible um so yeah that's Wasted potential, I think, so far, has been the hallmark of both, of every single Tales game since Vesperia. Vesperia, I know this has hurt a lot, and I know a lot of people argue it a lot and are probably just tired of hearing it, but it's, that was the complete package. It could have been better. Absolutely, it could have been better. There's no question about that. I don't know if the, how improved upon the 360 version, the PS3 version is. I, don't, I mean, I do know everybody believes that that version is unequivocally you cannot argue the ps3 version was far better it was that is if like if you ha if you can play that game if you understand japanese or if you uh can go along with like a translation of the game then by all means you should play that one because that version is far and away better than the 360 version but obviously not all of us got the ps3 version some of us can't you know like I wouldn't want to play along and have to like glance over at a translation then glance back and hit the A button and then be like, okay, what's they saying now? That would be annoying. I wouldn't even be playing the game. I'd be reading the script for most of my time there. But from what I heard, that game is definitely far better. They spent more time trying to balance the rest of the cast, although they made Yuri even more overpowered somehow while also doing that. So like he's still the best character in that game. 
But anyway, uh, Tales of Zillia. That's my. These are my initial impressions. And yeah.